after a surprise U.S. troop pullback, Turkey now preparing to launch an offensive along the Syrian-Iraqi border to remove Kurdish forces from the area and allow for a safe zone in order to resettle millions of Syrian refugees. RT correspondent Saya Tavinger is following the story. She's joining us live from the newsroom with all the details now. Saya? Yes, Manila, there are already reports that Turkey has started conducting airstrikes in Syria targeting the Syrian Democratic Forces. Now, those are the same forces that fought alongside with the U.S. to fight ISIS. But the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights has denied that claim instead, saying that the airstrike actually hit inside Iraq and not Syria. And now back here in Washington, D.C., President Trump is throwing Middle East policy into turmoil with his decision to withdraw American troops from the northeast Syria. Now, his decision is also creating a backlash from Republicans and some of America's closest allies. Still, though, President Trump is defending his decision, saying it's time to get out and let others figure out that situation. But leaving it, leaving it out for other countries to figure it out is much easier said than done. You see, when the U.S. went into eastern Syria to defeat ISIS, it sent about 2,000 American troops to fight alongside 60,000 Syrian Democratic Forces, which the Syrian Kurds were part of. Now, in their fight against ISIS, the Kurds lost close to 15 thousand troops. So to open the way for a Turkish attack on Kurdish-led forces, those same fighters who helped the U.S. is causing a lot of criticism by a lot of Republicans, actually, including some of Trump's most loyal allies, one of which is Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, who is now threatening legislation to impose economic uh, sanctions on Turkey. That's a NATO ally if it invades Syria. Now, Graham seems to have a lot of Democrat allies on his issue and is even warning a veto-proof congressional vote. But, of course, that hasn't been, that hasn't just been U.S. lawmakers that seem blindsided by Trump's decision. Now, a Kremlin spokesman has also announced that the U.S. did not contact Russia before making an announcement about the planned military pullout from Syria. Nobody from the U.S. informed us, but we also don't know yet which troops are going to be pulled back, how many, and even whether they are withdrawn and so on. You know there were different statements on U.S. troops withdrawals from different parts of the world which weren't confirmed afterwards. Therefore, we are closely monitoring the development of the situation. Now, meanwhile, Turkey's vice president said his country would not bow to Trump's threats. And today, outside of U.N. offices in Syria, hundreds of wounded U.S.-backed Turkish fighters expressed their fears of an impending Turkish invasion and ultimate death sentence. It seems that Turkish aggression through its Ottoman mentality continues to pose threats in every direction. We, the people of northeastern Syria, call on the international community, humanitarian organizations and the United Nations to intervene to stop this aggression. Now, in March, Syrian Kurds captured the last sliver of land held by the Islamic State, marking the end of the so-called caliphate. So now, as to the future of the Syrian Kurds, only time will tell.